clear track, too. What's coming through? A runaway? Worse than that, the president's special. The boss himself. Switch 24 to track 8. Okay. Come on, I let you go. I'm a hungry like a billy goat. He's hoping Mom's got a good speed. The one good thing about this job is Mom's grub. None of that camp chow for me tonight. It's payday and I'm going to town. Come on, Pete, make it snappy. Let's get out of here. You're out of luck, buddy. We're stuck here for some time. What's the big idea? Well, speak for yourself. The clock signals against us. Come in. Yes, sir? Tell the engineer to stop at the north end of the camp. I want to get as far from that chow car as possible. But, Mr. Fishbaker, the desert, the heat. Mm -hmm. I prefer the heat to that camp cook. He's too full of complaints. Oh, she sent you another letter, sir. I don't want to see it. That woman is the crank of cranks. I can't understand why she's so popular. The men all swear by her, sir. I don't want to hear any more about her. You have my orders, carry them out, and hurry. Yes, sir. I wonder what's holding up the parade. Well, this is payday, ma'am, and most of the boys will be going to town. Oh, they will, will they? Yes, ma'am. Down on payday. So you think they're going to town? Don't get out too late tonight, girls, or Mom will spy. Hurry up, you guys. Hurry up. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look out for Mitzi, Roy! Who said who wasn't going to town? Well, they ain't there yet. Uh, she mad at the car just stop. Who said who was going to town? Hey, the tank's empty. Empty? No gas, no move, no gas. And no mercy. Come on, boys, let's go back to child car and get some grub. There was gas in Lena this afternoon. Where do you suppose it could have gone? Town ain't no place for them on payday. Look what happened last week. Drinking and carousing and losing all that dough. And they won't listen when I tell them. is served. Butter else, butter. Uh-uh, no spinach. I have some spinach, Slim. Oh, I don't like them, Mom. Wouldn't you like me to mend your coat instead of you going around in rags? I sure would, thanks. Well, then have some spinach. No spinach, oh. no mend. Oh, all right. Next, George. Oh, Mom. Don't mom me. I know all about what happened last week in the Pink Mouth. Oh, uh, that was just a friendly argument. Ha! Friendly, my eye. You broke two chairs, a table, a looking glass, and six bottles of scotch. You're just a drunk. Oh, uh, but mom, I didn't drink them. I threw them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you laugh, you lug. But when any one of you go wild, I'm the one that gets the blame. And I'm the one who's got to square it for you. Often wonder why you bother with it so much, Mom. Yeah, so do I. I think it's a habit. What do you want? I'd like to see Miss Henrietta Tubbs. <clears throat> I ain't got my glasses. What is it? My name is Elliot Whaley of Whaley, Crenshaw and Chaddick Solicitors. I want to see Miss Tubbs on a legal matter. Oh, a lawyer. 
Oh, no, she don't live here no more. She done moved a long time ago. Yes, but Billy. Yes, sir, really. Goodbye. Rather abruptly. She seems to move so suddenly. That's for me. Well, George, you've got us into a nice mess this time. The pink mouse has sent a mouthpiece after us. A lawyer? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Mom. Ah, oh, forget it. Say, what held you boys up just now, anyway? Fishbaker came through in his private car. What? He's laying over on the main line spur. Gonna make an inspection. Hey, where are you going, Mom? I've been saving a piece of my mind for that guy. Don't make it too tough on him, Mom. Remember, he's the big boss. No, but he's my boss. But he's ours. Reckless. Yes, ma'am. You're reckless. I think you're stopping to fill the tank. Yes, ma'am. You got it filled up, Reckless? Yes, ma'am. You're going to drive? Yes. Hurry up. It's getting late. It'll be dark before we get there. Yes. That's your back. He's a double cross, Timmy. Maybe Mom didn't want you boys to go to town tonight. <laughs> Sorry, lady, but this is a private car. Yes, well, I'm on private business. I want to see Mr. Fishbaker. Sorry, ma'am, but he ain't seen nobody. Besides, he's shady. Oh, and that's so. Hey, you tight-fisted, meaty mouth son of a tie-jumping tarantula. Well, you, you, I'll have you thrown off a of railroad property. Oh, no, you won't. I'm the cook around here. Tubbs is the name. Oh, you're that crank who's been mailing me all those letters. Yeah, and getting no answers. Exactly what do you want? I want you to improve conditions around here. The boys work hard. They're entitled to mattresses, not straw, and showers to keep them clean, and a club room to keep them out of saloons, and a hospital in case they get sick working for you. That's just a few of the things. Would they appreciate a series of symphony concerts? If you had any sense, you'd know that a happy workman is a good workman, and you get more out of them if you'd meet them halfway. We'll take it up at the next meeting of the board of directors. Blast your board of directors. They'll say no. They always say no. Miss Tubbs, would you mind if I finish shaving? Yeah. Will you do me just one favor? Now what? Cut yourself. <laughs> There's your old railroad for you. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Hello, Mom. Hello, Hello, Mom. Mom. Hello. Well, did you see him? Did you give him a piece of your mind? Yeah, and he won't forget me for a long time. Deal me in. I hope you had some luck here to play my hands. Thank you, Mom. I hope I'll stay. Blame. I'm in. The limit. I'll uh, call at once. There's your bet, Mom, and one better. So much. I'm out. Oh, cost me too. Well, all right. I'll raise you once more. That cures me. Me too. Not for me. Just to show you guys. Not even a pair of deuce. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Got a telegram for you, Mom. Telegram for me? My goodness, is it bad news? Sorry, but ain't allowed to tell the contents of a telegram. Good night. Good night. You know, every time I get one of these things, I'm afraid to open it. You never can tell what's in them. Well, here goes. <laughs> hey, you look at the signature, will you? It says when. When? Hey, give me that. What do you mean reading my mail? <laughs> <laughs> darling, darling Auntie, have wonderful news. Stop. Someone loves me, and I love him. Ain't that sweet boy? Think he's going to ask me important questions, Stop. Want you to be here when he does. You see, she never makes a move without me. Refuse to answer without you, you see? Want you to join me at weekend party to meet Phil and his parents, the Ronald Ash Orcott. Ronald Ash Orcott. Is that all one family? <laughs> <laughs> sure, he owns the NWN Railway. That check what a line. Makes no difference. If Wynn loves their son, it's good enough for me. Expect you Friday at the Hemlock. Locust Valley, Long Island. Oceans of love win. Did you hear that, boys? Long Island. Kind of stepping in society, ain't you, Mom? Oh, I've done it, boy. For years. I've worked in this smelly kitchen. Chopped wood and carried water. 
freezing in the winter and stifling in the summer. Just to give that kid a chance in life. And now, now she's got it. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Ma, 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 What are you lugheads standing around for? Don't you know you have to work tomorrow? Go on, beat it, beat it. Good night, Ma. Good night, Ma. Good night. Good night, Ma. Good night. Good night. Yes, ma'am. Camp number one, we kind of felt that we ought to show our appreciation for all that you've done for us, and so we kind of, we, uh, well, here it is. Well, what is it? It's a compartment. We want you to travel in style. We sure do. Uh, oh, that's awful nice of you, boys. Don't you go marrying none of them swell society guys. No, but I'm going to look them over. <laughs> and don't forget to come back. Who reckless in half to cook you off? Oh, I'll be back, boys. Where is that train? It ought to be here in five minutes. <coughs> Long distance telephone call for you, Mom. Long distance for me? Yes, from Locust Valley, Long Island. Look. You can use my office and I'll stay out here. Yes, thanks, Eddie. Here, hold that for me. Hello? Auntie Dolly. Auntie, the party's off. You don't have to come. What do you mean I don't have to come? I got a new dress and the boys are all here to see me off and, and everything. Oh, I know. I know. I'm... I'm terribly sorry. Well, well, what's happened? It's, it's kind of sudden, ain't it? Oh, honey, it's no use. You've been wonderful to me. But it won't work. Phil and I love each other. And we plan to be married. What? Well, I'm from the other side of the tracks. And nothing you or I can do about it. The other side of the track? Well, there are two sides to track. Oh, Auntie, I'm so miserable. Uh-huh. The minute my back turns, you're up to something. Now, you tell him, whoever he is, he's just wasting his time. You're mine, young lady, and don't you forget it. Phil, I, I'm talking to my aunt. So what? Let me say a little bit. It's rather important. Please, just a minute, darling. What's more important than my saying hello? Hello! Phil, I'm... I'm telling my aunt not to come. Not to come? I never heard of such a thing. Oh, it won't be any fun without her. Now, you've kept her hidden long enough. She comes or the party's off. Is that clear? The party is off. What are you talking about? Perhaps your mother could explain. Sure, mother can explain anything, but... Darling, what's the big idea anyway? I don't get it. I do. Say, now, wait a minute. Don't you go away and don't hang up. I'll be right back. Will you wait? Wait. Funny, his filth. Hello, Mother. Hello, darling. Hi, Dave. What's this I hear about the party being on? Oh, I've been meaning to tell you, Philip. Sudden, isn't it? It's business. What's up, Dan? Uh, there's rather an important meeting. There's a new member of the firm. You've got to be there. Well... You're a railroad man now, Phil. Shut up, darling. Can't we go after the party? No, we've got to be in Toronto Monday. 
I smell your fine Italian hand in this, am I right? Right, darling. That's the only way I can have you to myself. Oh, you're coming too? Yes, thank goodness we'll have a fourth at Bridge. I smell a whole trap full of mice. Gallant little thing, isn't it? Excuse me. Oh, Philip. I don't want you to worry about me. It doesn't matter. He isn't the only man in the world. Who says I'm not? I'm the only man for you. Phil, don't, please. Give me a kiss. I want you to hear it. Phil, I'll explain everything in the letter, Auntie. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Winnie. My goodness, what am I going to do now? Winnie. Well, I'm going anyway. They can't do that, Winnie. Who do they think they are? Come on, Ma. Here she is. Anything wrong? No, no, nothing. Oh, what could be wrong? <laughs> Come on, Ma. It was, but she... Oh, goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. Come in, come in. The door's open. Uh, Miss Henrietta Tubbs? Yes? My name is Elliot Whaley of Whaley, Crenshaw and Chaddock. We're solicitors. You know lawyers. Say, if it's about those broken bottles and chairs, George didn't mean any harm. He's just a big overgrown kid, but I'll pay every week out of his salary. I'm afraid there must be some mistake. You see, we're a London firm. I'm here on a mission for Sir Gerald Gore Blakely. Sir Gerald Gore Blakely? Who's he? Well, perhaps you knew him better as Limey. Limey? Say, any friend of Limey's is a friend of mine. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> How is that line monkey? I haven't seen him for years. What's the old black sheep doing now? He's dead. Oh, is that so? Well, that's too bad. What did he die of? Well, the doctors had a name for it, but I'd say bitterness. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. He was always kind of quiet and, and brooding. He was always very grateful for what you did for him. Oh, go on. I didn't do anything. I, I just tried to fatten him up a bit, that's all. But it makes me very happy to carry out his last wish. He made you sole beneficiary in his will. He left you his entire fortune. Well, I thought he was broke. Only in spirit. He was the last of his line. And he's left you about a hundred thousand pounds. A hundred thousand pounds? How much is that in railroad money? About half a million dollars. A half a... Oh, say. He didn't have to do that. He wished it so. I don't know what to say. It... It seemed right that, that I should take it. Thanks. I'll watch it and send it back to you. Oh, that won't be necessary, because you're coming with me. Where? London. You have to put in an appearance at the registrar's office. But it's merely a formality. But I can't go to London. I... I've got a niece who's in some trouble. Well, perhaps with this inheritance you can help her. Help her? Yeah. You could do a lot with half a million dollars, couldn't you? I should imagine so. Houses and servants and cars? That's what one wants, yes. Yeah, half that's what I want. I'll show those Ash Alcott. Ash Alcott? Important? They think they are. You see, my niece is in love with their son, but they'll have no part of her. Sounds faintly reminiscent. But they'll have to accept her now. I've got a half a million dollars. One can't always crash the inner circle of society with money. No? Fortunately, no. It's only done by the nouveau riche and is considered quite gauche, as a matter of fact. Is that so? <laughs> you see, people of culture have only one standard of aristocracy. Character. Culture? What's that? Well, it's rather difficult to define. It's the result of background, travel, music, and art. One could scarcely acquire it overnight. Background? Well, to say, my ancestors laid the tracks on the first railroad. And travel. We've covered as much territory as anybody. Art and music. Well, say, listen. You ain't never heard music till you've heard a train whistle coming in on the wind. 
mournful and, and kind of beautiful. You love the railroad, don't you? Not anymore. From now on, I'm out for culture. I'm going to travel, and I'm going to learn how to dress, and I'm going to listen to music, and I'm going to see art if it kills me. <laughs> Good. I'm going to give Gwen a family she's going to be proud of. Well, I'd love to help you, if I may. Will you? Will you sort of, sort of flash me a signal for a clear track? It would be a pleasure to serve you. All right. What's the next stop? London. And after that, as you would say, a clear track. All aboard! <laughs> Lady Tubbs' luggage arrived. It's on the way up, sir. And the flowers. They have been delivered. Is she pleased with the royal suite? Mr. Wemsley declared it's eminently satisfactory. Good. Telegram for Lady Tubbs. Thank you. Front. Uh, may I suggest, sir, that I handle this personally? Good idea, Stephen. Thank you, sir. Telegrams for Lady Tubbs, sir. Thank you. Hetty. Hetty! Well, Wendy, you've certainly done yourself proud. This is well. Now, Hetty. Oh, I mean, it's two, two plus. <laughs> Here's more telegrams. More telegrams? Well, I'll be a tie jumping tarantula. Hetty. Oh, well, what I mean is it's two, two divine. Oh, that's better. You know, I know you sent the others and the flowers, but who sent these? Cast your caviar on the waters and the return to school of goldfish. Oh, Wemsey, you know you're wonderful. I don't know how you do it, but you're absolutely wonderful. <laughs> you know, I understand everything except this business about Lady Tub. Whatever gave the newspaper men such a silly idea? I didn't talk to them. But you did. Wemsey, did you tell them I was Lady Tubbs? Come on, fess up now. I neither affirmed nor denied the allegation. Now, don't get legal with me. Did you or did you not? Well, reporters are notoriously an imaginative lot. Well, you don't do so badly yourself. Did you telephone Wynn? Yes, yeah, she's on the way here. Did you find out about Wynn and Phil? Conditions remain unchanged. But they're still in love with each other, aren't they? As an innocent spectator, I should say yes. And the father and mother, are they still acting up? The Ash Orchids remain polite, but... Firm. See what's in those, will you? Oh, Marie, hang those things up, will you? We will, then. And don't crease them, because heaven knows they cost enough. Yeah. <laughs> if the boys in the chow car could only see me now. <laughs> Still. Oh, you shouldn't have come. How are you, darling? Ah, there. Beautiful as ever. Hey, how would you answer my letter? Why won't you talk to me on the telephone? You know, you're an arch criminal. You've stolen my sleep and my peace of mind. You ought to get life with me. You're crazy. Sure I am. Aren't you? You have lunch with me. A condemned prisoner ate a hearty meal. Oh, come on. You've got to. I've got so much to say to you. Well, I can't. My aunt just arrived from Europe and she's waiting for me. Well, let me go with you. May I? <laughs> All right. I'll drive you. If you want it. <laughs> How do I look? Darling, swell. Come on. Hey, Mary, the door. Well, we will, madame. I'm Wynne Howard. Oh, come in. You are expectant. Thank you. Is that you, Wynne? Auntie! Wynne! Oh, darling, come here. Oh, my darling. I'm so glad to see you. Take off your hat and let me have a look at you. 
Oh, you're prettier than ever. But you're too thin. You don't eat enough. Well, haven't you anything to say? No, I don't know what to say. You look wonderful, and you sound just the same. But somehow you've changed. And I've been reading all these things in the paper. What does it mean? Well, um... Come along in here. Oh, Wemsy! Come here, I want you to meet someone. He's a darling. You love him. Oh, Wemsy, this is Wynne. How do you do? How do you do? Wynne, this is Elliot Wemsley. He pronounces it Whaley. Why, I'm sure I don't know. Your aunt has been saving this pleasure too long. Thank you. Well, sit down, sit down. Tell me, how did all this happen? He did it. But I don't understand. The papers say you're rich and have a title and just arrived from Europe. But I've been getting your letters from camp. Well, I sent them to the camp, and then they mailed them on to you. Why all the mystery? Because I wanted to surprise you. We are rich. We have a half million, or something like that. You know, Cinder to Cinderella. And he's my fairy godmother. <laughs> <clears throat> but the title? Uh, well, um... Uh, well, you see, your aunt wished to travel incognito. Yes, that's it, incog. Whatever that is. <laughs> you mean... You mean you're really Lady Tubbs? I am. And I'll kick the slats out of the first hunky that says I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have got this started talking about my trip. Let me look clean, my dear. Clean, please. Tell me, uh, how are you and Phil getting on? Been seeing him? Not very often. Well, you're going to. The uh, Ash Orcots, they live in uh, Locust Valley. Yes. Telephone them. Oh, Auntie, I'd rather not. Do as I say. But what can I say to them? Well, tell them, uh, tell them I'm giving a tea and I want her to come over and split a lemon with me. <laughs> she won't talk to me and I know she won't come. She'll talk to you and she'll come. Go ahead. There you are, Wendy. Thank you. Will you please get me Locust Valley in Long Island, the Ash Alcott residence? Oh, I'm not quite sure. One meets so many people. Mm. Doesn't one? Small flame and heart. Pass. Mm. Pass. Double it. Redouble. Beg pardon, madam. Yes, Parker. Miss Howard is calling on the telephone. Miss Howard? Miss Wynne Howard? Yes, madam. Of course, I'm not at home. Yes, madam. Persistent little cousins of working classes. Well, I thought she was rather a nice little girl. Oh, but so common. Absolutely no background. She works. Hello? Mrs. Ash Orchard is not at home. You see? Don't hang up. But, Alice, she's not at home. Oh, baloney. Tell her you're calling for Lady Tubb. But do as I say. I'm... I'm speaking for Lady Tubb. Lady Tubb? Very good, miss. Are you having a very large crowd for the hunt, Alice? Oh, just a few friends. Twenty or twenty-five bounce. I'm simply parenting your eye to hounds again. Oh, I should think you would be. You look as though you were born in the saddle. <laughs> Beg pardon, madam. Miss Howard is calling for Lady Tubbs. Lady Tubbs? Lady Tubbs? Are you quite certain, Parker? Quite, madam. All right, I'll be right there. You sly fox, you. Snaring the lion of the owl right under our very noses. Mm, neat work, Alice. <laughs> well, we're very dear friends. Same school, as a matter of fact. Oh, wasn't she so Sweet to call. Excuse me. I won't be but a moment. Well, it looks as though Alice has made a grand slam. Mm. Thanks, Parker. Hello, Wynne. Hello, Mrs. Ash Alcott. Wynne, darling, how sweet of you to call. And how's dear, dear Lady Tubbs? My aunt is splendid, thank you. Your aunt? How stupid of me. I should have known. Lady Tubbs is giving a tea for some of my friends on Saturday. Can you come? Oh, I should love it. But, but as it happens, a number of my friends are coming here for the weekend. Why don't you do this? Why don't you bring your party over here? What did Lady happen to say? Surely your aunt knows them. Oh, I'm quite sure she does. And be sure you bring your riding togs, all of you. We're having a fox hunt Saturday morning. She's going to have a fox hunt. Oh, that'll be swell. What? No but. Say yes and hang up before she changes her mind. Uh, yes. Then I'll expect you Friday. Shall we say tea time? Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> well, that's that. We're practically there. Oh, Alta, you're not going to go through with it. Of course I am. Aren't we, 
Wednesday. Yes, I should enjoy it, that hunt. You never rode a horse in your life before. Well, I never cooked until I had to, either. Can't you understand? To ride to hounds is an art. There's a saying that it takes one generation to make a millionaire and two to make a fox hunter. Three to make a good one. Oh, fiddlesticks. Look at this, all bone and muscle. Don't you think I can hang on to any nag they ever clap the saddle on? You should see me climb the steel work of a bridge. Mr. Wensley, you do something with it. My dear, I've discovered that when your aunt's made up her mind, she's made up her mind. But you may spoil everything. Nonsense, I won't spoil anything. I'll have that fox eating right out of my hand. I can hardly wait. And when I get through, I'll be wearing him as a neck piece. <laughs> Auntie, I'm, I'm afraid. Listen, my dear, if I hear you use that word once again, I'll take you right over my knee. But suppose they find out you were a camp cook. How can they? But if they do, I'd never be able to show my face again. Not that I'm ashamed of it, but they might think differently. Well, what they don't know won't bother us. Those people are from a different world. Why, well, they always speak another language. I'm not worrying. Wemsey taught me a system. The vocabulary of the modern sophisticate is very limited. There's nothing to it. In the event that one is talking about a woman, one merely has to say... She's too sweet. Or a man. Oh, he's too marvelous. Or an event. It's too amazing. And if by chance something should turn up that's not in either of these categories, one is always safe in saying... It's too, too divine. <laughs> you really think it'll work? It better. <laughs> Bring the luggage in, Paris. Well, good morning. How splendid you look. Thank you, Miss Ashmolecott. Uh, may I present my aunt, Lady Tubbs? Lady Tubbs, how do you do? Oh, Let me welcome you to America. Oh, I mean Long Island. Oh, it was so good of you to come. It was too, too sweet of you to have asked me. And uh, Elliot Wemsley. Oh, how do you do? One reads of you constantly. You're too kind. Oh, it was so good of you to come, too. I wouldn't have missed this weekend for worlds. Very nice of you. I suppose you're simply perishing to freshen up. Uh, Parker will show you to your room. I must apologize for my husband. He's having a business conference with Mr. Fishbaker. Isn't business revolting? Um... Who did you say? Edward J. Fishbaker. Of course you know him. He's in railroads. Oh. Oh, yes, railroads. Oh, how oh, antediluvian. <laughs> well, hardly. My husband owns one. Owns one? Oh, how too, too divine, isn't it, Wemsey? Quite. <laughs> Auntie, dear, I think we're keeping Mrs. Ash Orchard from her guest. Oh, of course, my dear. Come along. I'll be down in two shakes. I mean, I... I can't be possible. Now, we both know freight brings in six times the revenue of passengers. Granted. Well, then, if our railroads merged, we'd have practically a monopoly throughout the state. Does the NWN carry capacity freight right now? Yes. And another thing. I have a chance to try out a new lighter weight freight car that'll slash operating costs tremendously. Yes, I've had my eye on those new cars, too. Have you had a chance to look through that financial report? Yes, but I want to study it more thoroughly. Come in. Lady Thompson arrives, sir. Cocktails to be served on the test. Very well, Parker. I'll give you my decision about this merger before the weekend is over. That's on. fine. I hear Lady Thompson's arrived. Have you seen her? No, but they say her niece is very pretty. And millions! Pulling a titled aunt out of her sleeve. She ought to go into vaudeville as a magician. <laughs> Title or no title, she's still a climber. Meow! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, they were, they, anyway. In the house, they'll be down presently. Uh, I'm simply perishing to meet them. Rather. Uh, we had a tubs in the coal streams. Uh, my regiment, you know. Really? Yes, they shot him as a spy. How unfortunate. Oh, but it couldn't be the same family. Indubitably. Philip, hmm? I understand you're rather fond of her niece. Just a childish infatuation. <laughs> Nothing serious. I married mine. Oh, Reggie, darling. Uh -oh. Score one. Oh. Oh, but here they are. Darling. How are you, anyway? 
And of course, this is your aunt. I'm Phil. You better like me because you're going to see a lot of me. Why didn't you tell me you were so good looking, Wynn? <laughs> oh, I know I'm going to like you. <laughs> and this is Annie's best friend, Elliot Wendell. How do you do it? Lady Dobbs. May I present Lady Abernathy? How do you do? How do you do? Lord Abernathy. Charmed, I'm sure. And Miss Leonard. Miss Leonard. Miss Leonard. Oh, and this is Mr. Wembley. Hello, Wembley. Hello, Wembley. Hello, Wembley. Hello, Wembley. Hello, Wembley. Hello, Lady Abernathy. Hello. I heard that you were here. Sit down. My husband and Mr. Fishbaker, Lady Tubbs. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Fishbaker. Fishbaker. Haven't I met you somewhere before? Paris, maybe, or, or was it Monte Carlo? Well, you know, your face is familiar, but I... Can't quite seem to place you. That's curious. You know, I have a theory about that. I believe that everyone has a twin. <laughs> it's too, too amazing. Hello. How are you? How about something cool and refreshing in a glass? Mm. You all right? Love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the best man won. Better luck next time. <laughs> Shall we do things with swan dives and backflips? Mm, grand idea. So I'll bring you there. Who all wants to go in swimming? Gene? Come on, last one in gets drowned. <laughs> well, Gene, looks as though the visiting team was doing all right. Oh, yeah? Well, the home team goes into action tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I see, Lady Tubbs. Uh, from what part of England are you? I come to the north. You don't say. By Jove, what a coincidence. So am I. Oh, well, I mean, I came from there originally, but I hadn't been years. I'm living in the South Park now. You do say, uh, but that's Lady Abernethy's domicile. Yes, yes uh, Ashby de la Zouche. Ah, you must have acquaintances in common. Oh, I'm sure we have. By Jove, uh, you must know the Quorn Hounds. I'll say I do. Charming. I spent a weekend with them last fall. Spent a weekend? Oh, I see. What a ripping sense of humor, <laughs> eh, what? They are justly considered one of the most famous hunting packs in England, don't you think, Abernathy? Rather. Uh, speaking of the Quorn, I had a delightful run with them last season. Perhaps you read my article in Spur. I'll say I did. Wednesday showed it to me. You certainly can sling the lingo. <laughs> sling the lingo? Oh, I see. You are up on new slang, eh, what? <laughs> well, that phrase has been taken up by some of the best people. Lady Tubbs, you must teach me. I should be too delighted. Well, uh, as I was saying, uh, the hunt had begun. Uh, we had flushed the covert. Uh, the hounds had given tongue and the field was away. All at once? Mm, uh, like a shot, I might say. I noticed one of the riders. My suspicions were aroused. Oh. What had he done? Uh, it wasn't anything. But just my instinct, you know. I felt him to be a pretender, not fit to associate with ladies and gentlemen. Oh, your instinct told you that? Uh, yes. Uh, strange, isn't it? Uh, Martha thinks me uncanny, but there you are. If there's anything that I abominate, it's a person who poses as being something he isn't. Uh, don't you, Lady Tubbs? Why, uh, <laughs> yes, I do. I'm sure that we all agree with you, Abernathy. Yeah, uh, I felt certain, of course, that sooner or later the fellow would, uh, Martha, throw me a word. Uh, what's the phrase? Spill the beans. Ah, spill the beans. <laughs> it's remarkable how slang is sweeping the continent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, isn't it? Well, as I was saying, uh, we'd ridden perhaps a couple of miles when confronting the field was a fence. Uh, rather a high fence, to be sure. The rest of the field took it, and there wasn't a spill. And then, what do you suppose I saw? What? The fellow had quickly turned his horse and had ridden towards the gate and was calmly going through that instead of over the fence. A bally gate, mark you. The cab. Yeah, I, I reported him to the MFH. And the putrid bounder was socially ostracized, if you know what I mean. And it served the beggar jolly well right. Ah! Spoken like a true sportswoman. Darling. Yes, dear. Just darling. Kiss me. Do you like my aunt? Who? My aunt. Never heard of her. 
Oh, darling, talk sense. On a night like this? Do you ever? Sure. When I say I love you. I repeat. I love you. Do you like my aunt? I love you. Do you like my aunt? I love you, aunt. Darling. A pleasure. enters the Garden of Eden. Now, don't tell me I'm not intruding, because I'm sure I am. I meant to. And that's what I like about Jean, straight to the point. It saves a great deal of wear and tear, doesn't it, Miss Howard? I wouldn't know. Say, would you all mind if I sat down? I think I'll take a ringside seat and the white corner. Stick around. You'll love this. I'm afraid I'm not a very good audience for a fall. Excuse oh, me? Oh, no, don't go. I'm going to be heard. I haven't rehearsed this in front of my mirror for nothing. I think we're both going to walk out on you. Oh, no, you're not. I've been wanting to kick and break things ever since you came, Miss Howard. Jean, you're reaching a new low tonight. The weekend is still young, darling. I don't like you, Miss Howard, and I think I have good reason. Jean. Please don't interrupt. Phil and I were raised together. People have sort of taken us for granted as a team. We were both pleased with the idea until you came. Jean, when's my guest? Are you sure that's all? Something tells me I'm going to land in jail. I might have overlooked a little adventure here and there, but bringing said little adventure into your own house is cheap and common. Why, you... And there's more where that came from. The winner! I knew I'd pick the lucky corner. Good night, Jean. Next time, pick on somebody not quite your own size. Don't deceive yourself in the belief you can conceal your fear, if any, from your horse. Don't punish your horse if it's playful. Keep his head up and you will not come a cropper. <laughs> oh, that is true. Now, this is the way to hold the reins. Right? Yes. Now, crop in the right hand. Yes. Hat on the head at an angle. There. That's a farthing. Now, how am I doing? Hetty, you're a born horsewoman. I hope the horse knows it. <laughs> Give me a push, one to get the feel of it. All right, we'll trot again. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh go easy. Don't go far. You know, the, the important thing is to remember to ride as though you were part of the horse. Which far? Oh! 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 Oh, oh give me a drink. Oh. Hetty, a word of warning. Shoot. Ride Rosemary in the morning. Why, is she quiet? As quiet as a lamb. That won't do. I want a horse without even a bounce. All right, well, remember Rosemary. Rosemary. You, horseback riding surely wears one out. Good exercise. To your marriage to Philip. Will it mean so much? Not too much, Philip. That's all I wanted to know. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho, the merry yo, a hunting we will go. Lady Top. Good morning. Oh! Oh, good morning. Why would you look happy this morning? I think an early morning romp with the hounds always makes one feel happy. It's so invigorating, you know, the hounds and the hedges. Yeah, the hounds and the hedges, eh? Oh, it's too, too divine. Good morning. Oh, good morning, dear. Good morning, Auntie. Good morning, Mr. Dishman. Good morning. Doesn't she look sweet? Indeed she does. Would you take her down? With pleasure. Thank you. Good morning, Hetty. Hey, you look splendid. Well, I don't feel like it. I'm scared. What have you got a top hat on? Is it a formal affair? No, the, the visiting MFH is of the old school. MFH? What's that? What is it? Master of Foxhounds, Lord Abernathy. Oh. Well, all I can say is heaven help the F-O-X. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Good morning, you two. Sleep well? Good morning. Very well, thank you. She rides beautifully, doesn't She's she? She's devoted her life to it. And little else. Who's that guy over there in the jockey hat? Oh, that's the huntsman in charge of the hunt. The other man is the whipper in. He keeps the hounds together and on the scent. Well, whip her in or whip her out. He's just a jockey to me. <laughs> Lady Top, I picked a fine spirited mouth for you. Oh, oh, but I wanted Rosemary. Oh, I wouldn't dream of letting you ride Rosemary. She's too tame. Miss Leonard has loaned you her mouth. Oh, isn't that sweet of Miss Leonard? What's his name? Lightning. Oh, Lightning. Splendid animal, fine spirit. I'm sure he'll be in at the kill. Oh, I hope I will be, too. Ah, here he comes. Oh! Lightning's looking for a place to strike. And I think I know the place. Miss Leonard, I wouldn't dream of depriving you of your favorite mount. Oh, not at all. I insist that you have him. Stick to me. Hello. No win. Hello. Hello. Down the horn. Riding the hound. Don't be an idiot. You want a hitch? Well, what about lightning here? Oh, I'll put him under the trailer. All right. Get in. Come on, lightning. Come on, boy. Come on. Ash. 
fresh orchids. <laughs> they make me sick, putting on airs with their fox hunts. Ah! It's a joke. What's funny about them? I've known them from a way back. Oh, you do? Sure. <laughs> I know the whole kit and caboodle of them, and everything to do. Would you tell a fellow? Would I? <laughs> I'll tell you where I got that name. Ash Orchid. <laughs> You're in first. The brush is yours. Huntsman, present Lady Tubbs with a brush. Congratulations. 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 Bless my eyes, it's magnificent. Never saw anything better, even at Melton Mowbray. Oh, I don't know. Really, it, it, it was nothing. Nothing? To trail the field, cut back and be in first at the kill? Magnificent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Let's pay tribute to a fine rider. Three cheers for Lady Tubbs. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Uh-huh. Gene is hip. Hip? Mm. Come, come, everybody. This calls for a celebration. Oh, well, follow on. How long has your aunt been riding? Why, I'm not quite sure. She must ride magnificently to have won the brush. I wish I could have seen it. Well, I did. And it was extraordinary, to say the least. Trust little Jean to be in at the kill. I wouldn't miss the dinner to the guest of honor for worlds. It's a gala event for you, Miss Howard, isn't it? I'm very happy for my aunt. We should really declare a national holiday with fireworks. Perhaps there will be fireworks. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll change. Well, don't be too long, Wynn. Darling. I won't, dear. Come in! Oh, hello, Wynn. I'm just filling this up with good old corn liquor. The flowers are south from the builder of the West. Auntie, I'm terribly worried. Now what happened? It's Jean. I'm afraid she's going to cause trouble again. Don't you bother your pretty head about her. Or anyone else, for that matter. But, Auntie, she's threatened fireworks for dinner tonight. Oh, let's pack and leave at once. They do nothing of the sort. But supposing she's found out about you and tells everyone. What's to become of you and me? Whatever she knows, she won't tell anyone. I fixed that. And how are you going to stop her? Do you know where Wemsy is now? He's attending to our interests in Yonkers. Yonkers? Ah. We can expect you then. I'm sure you'll have a very good time. You bet! This sick horse business ain't so hot. I'm glad of a chance for the change. Oh yes, that reminds me. I was asked to give you this for incidental expenses. Fifty bucks? 
Hey, that's swell. I can rely on you definitely, then. I'll be there with bells on. All right. And take a cab from the station. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. He, uh, get them where they're hot and now they're hot. Get a blistering bow a delightful doggy, a tempting, tantalizing tidbit. They are red hot. Excuse me. There you are, sir, a hot, hot dog for a nickel. Tickle your palate for a nickel. Thank you, but I've had my lunch. Well, have it for dessert, then. It's delicious and delightful. And only a nickel. Very well. It's not bad, you know. You bet. Excuse me, but, um, could I talk business to you for a moment? Come right in. They both accepted, and I think we can rely on their being here. Oh, that's well. Did you get the report on the asphalt cut rail? Completely worthless. The stocks are watered, and the railroad is hardly sold. Whimsy, this report is worth its weight in gold. And so are you. I wonder what's holding up Fishbaker. Well, he promised to drop in before dressing. That's probably he now. Come in. You wish to see me, Lady Thomas? Yes, Mr. Fishbaker. Will you look over this report of the true condition of the NWN Railroad? Please, Thomas, I don't understand. How could you... Well, never mind. Let's have a look. Why, this is extraordinary. Bonded pledge of five million. First, three and a half. Operating ratio, 27.6%. Creditors will set forth insolvency. Good heavens, this is nothing like the report I got. No, I didn't think so. Well, I can't possibly go through with that merger in the face of such facts. Lady Tubbs, you saved me from making a very grave mistake. Oh, just the tune of a million and a half, that's all. Why have you done this for me? I'll tell you why, you tight-fisted, mealy mouth son of a tie dummy tarantula. You! You! Yes, Mom Tubbs, your cook. But I... Now, do my boys get showers and mattresses in a new club room in the hospital? Do they? Do they? Yes, then I'll even throw in that series of symphony concerts. Mr. Fishbaker. Oh, Wendy. Oh, here you are. Have a drink. Yes, thank you. I don't wish to press you, but uh, I wonder if you could give me your answer on that merger. Well, Ronnie, thanks to Lady Tubbs, the answer's no. Lady Tubbs? What's she got to do with it? How dare she? Pardon, sir, but Lady Tubbs requests the honor of your presence in her suite. In her suite? Yes, sir. That's an extraordinary invitation. She is an extraordinary guest of honor. <laughs> it was sweet of you to come. I want you to taste this special liquor. <coughs> liquor? Yes, it was made by the ancestors of the peasants on one of my estates. Which one? Oh, Mr. Ash Walker, Mr. Fishbaker. Will you join us? This has been in my family for generations. Well, I... Oh, I... do. You must catch up with us. Oh, we're way ahead of you. <laughs> May I propose a toast? Oh, please do. I adore toast. They're so friendly, don't you think? To Lady Tubbs, gentlewoman and good sportsman. I refuse to drink to that. Jing! Why? If you persist in this ridiculous pose as a guest of honor, there's something I'm going to say to all of you. I know exactly what you're going to say. And I shall say it for you. You're going to say that I cheated at the hunt, that I was thrown for my horse, that I took a shortcut on the truck, and that I didn't deserve the brush. Oh, by the way, remind me to tell you something about that truck driver later. Well, you're perfectly right. But I didn't claim that I'd won it. It was given to me. In fact, it was forced on me. As a matter of fact, I know nothing whatever about fox hunting. But I do know enough to keep my mouth shut, Miss Jean. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I could say something about a rose-covered arbor and secret meetings in the moonlight and champagne. But I won't, Jean, because you're supposed to be a lady of society with breeding and background. And the less said about it, the better. Well, now that you know that, there's something else you should know. I'm not Lady Tuck. <laughs> I'm a cook. A cook? Yes, a cook in a railroad construction camp. Ask Mr. Fishbaker there. <laughs> Is, is this true? Yes, and a very excellent one, too. Well, I must say that I don't... No, no, don't say it. You see, I pretended to be a lady because I thought it would be very amusing to see how people like you cut out to money and titles. <laughs> Ronald, I insist that you order this 
this person out of my house at once. Yes, lady, Miss Tubbs. I insist that you leave immediately. Not so fast, children. Wendy? Say, you and I ought to mortgage. Frankfurters and horses, we'd make a fortune. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Elmer. Hi. Would you come in? Yes, sir. Hi, old runny old suck, old boy, old kid, old thing. How's me long lost brother? Brother? Ronald, who is this, this person? Oh, you must be Ronnie's old lady. Go on, ball him out for giving me the go-by all these years. And me, the best horse doctor in Yonkers. Horse doctor? Veterinarian. I'll sue you. I'll divorce you. And I'll get damages, too. You see if I don't. I won't stay in this house another minute. Oh, please don't go. I have a little surprise for you, too. Wendy? Josephus? Yes, sir. Well, 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 everybody all dressed up, just like a funeral. Alice! How are you, you old battle axe? Alice, who is this man? Put it there, partner. Ash is the name, Red Hot Ash, best weenies on City Island. Weenies? You bet, tickle your palate for a nickel. Say, ain't you proud of your brother? I've been doing all right for myself. Is this weenie man your brother? Well, uh, yes. Oh, so you're going to sue me. You're going to divorce me. My family's not good enough for you. And your brother sells weenies. <laughs> That's rich. Oh, Mr. Fishbaker, would you take these two gentlemen down and introduce them to the other guests? I'd be delighted. Be seen, Alice. So long, Ronnie. Oh! I trust that this settles the question of family once and for all. Miss Tubbs, I want to thank you. What for? If not for you, I'd have married into the family of a horse doctor and a weenie salesman. Well, you could do a lot worse. No, thanks. I think I'll stick to Ronaldo. He's the best prince money can buy. Well, I'm very glad I was helpful. Oh, Wednesday, will you take Jean down and buy her a drink? Charmed. Well, now that we understand each other, I'm sure the dinner will be a great success. Now, I know you two would like to be left alone. And don't forget that, after all, a title is merely a title. But a weenie is an institution. Weenies. Horse doctor. Weenies. Horse doctor. Weenies. Horse feathers. Oh, children, put out your hands. Now, keep them like that until after dinner. Hetty, they're waiting dinner. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Oh, I needed that, huh? After all, you are the guest of honor. Well, why do you think I have my fingers crossed? Here, give me your hand. Now, you keep them like that until after dinner, too. Come along now. Oh, no. Lady Tubbs. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lady Tubbs. A great sportswoman. A great wit. A great raconteur. A great beau vivo. And a greater lady. Well, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, won't you tell us, please, how you won the brush, Lady Tubbs? Of course, Abby. Old boy, if you insist. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, I really am surprised that I'm alive to tell the tale. Because today was the first time I've ever ridden a horse. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw my mount, I nearly called the whole thing off. It took sheer willpower for me to mount lightning before I had a chance to strike. <laughs> <laughs> so I shut my eyes and shouted all aboard. <laughs> her imagination is just as remarkable as her horsemanship. She's a panic. <laughs> First lightning took offense, and then I took offense, and then we both took offense, but not at each other. <laughs> and then, without even telling me, he got very, very cross and threw me. And that rather hurt my feelings, as well as other things. <laughs> Imagine an expert horsewoman like Lady Tubbs being thrown. Oh, it's preposterous. And there you are. At least there I was. And when I looked up, who do you think I saw rushing right at me? Oh. The fox! <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I grabbed him by the brush, I mean his throat. And I wrestled with him. And while I was wrestling with him, the hounds keep running up. And I threw the box at the hounds and they flew right back at me. <laughs> She's a humbling as she's a cock. She slays me. <laughs> Grant Marvel. <laughs> She's a grand person. <laughs> this method is strongly recommended by the Tub School of the Hunt. For further details, send to my little booklet, Fox Hunting with Gun and Camera. Send no money. Pay the postman. The price is a dollar, including the fox. <laughs> <laughs> the boys at the construction camp expect you Thursday for gala opening of the new chow car and clubhouse with shower, Fish Baker. Well, the old fox hunting son of a tie jumping tarantula finally came across to the boys. Oh, Reckless, answer this wire and say that we'll be there. Yes, ma'am. The boys at the construction camp will sure be glad to see more tubs again. Not more tubs, Reckless. Lady tubs. Yes, sir. Correction again with Lady Whaley. Oh, Wemsy, why did you tell them that? I want to save it for the blow-off. But you don't mean you're really a lady. Oh, I have my moments. But, Auntie, I don't understand. Well, you see, darling, Wemsy's a knight. Of course he hasn't any armor or a round table or any of that sort of role. But he is Sir Elliot Wemsley. You two will have to honeymoon in Honolulu alone. Wemsy, we'll have to have our honeymoon in a box car. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's all too wonderful. Oh, no, darling, it's just too, too divine. <laughs>